my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. On the day after Martin Luther King Jr. was killed, I decided to do an exercise that would help my students to understand racism. I tried to make a difference. I'm still trying to make that difference. Is there anyone in the United States that we do not treat as our brothers? Yes. Who? Yes. The, black yes. People. Yes. the black people. How are black people treated? How are Indians treated? How are people who are of a different color than we are treated? They, like they are part of this place. world. They don't get anything in this world. Why is that? Because they're different colors. I feel people need this because we are still doing now what we were doing in the 50s. Is there anything about you people that is different from one another that we could use to make part of you? Like the eyes, the color of the eyes are? Okay, we could use the color of your eyes. How many in here have blue eyes? Okay, how many in here have brown eyes? It might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. Would you like to try this? I'm trying to get the people who participate in this exercise the opportunity to find out how it feels to be something other than white in this society. All right, people, I'm Jane Elliott. I'm your resident bitch for the day, and make no mistake about that. That's exactly what this is about. I do this in a mean, nasty way because racism, sexism, ageism, Homophobia, ethnocentrism are mean and nasty. Today, I am here because I have been asked to do an exercise in discrimination based on eye color. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to give these nice, blue-eyed, white kids the opportunity to spend about an hour and a half to two hours on the receiving end of the treatment which we meet out to people of color on a daily basis in this country. They're in a blue-eyed holding room right now. They are not eating, they are not drinking. There are three chairs in there for 12 people. We're going to bring these people in here. You're going to treat them as though they're inferior because they are inferior. Everybody understand that? They're not going to learn because they can't learn and because we're going to set it up so they can't learn. And if they succeed, who has failed? We, we have. You people want to fail? No, if they get power, who loses power? We do. You want to lose power? No, we're going to accuse them of not being as smart as we are. We're going to accuse them as not, of not being as clean as we are. We're going to lower our expectations for them. We're going to force them to live down to our expectations of them. And when they do, we're going to blame their inability to perform on the color of their eyes. Now, in order to get them in their chat into their adult ego state, we're going to try to teach them the listening skills. Now, what do we call men that we want to keep in their childlike state? Boy. We're going to call these males boy. You're not going to use their given name. You're going to call them boy. Or you're going to call them bluey. Or you're going to call them fool. <laughs> now, people, what do we call women besides chicks? Honey, baby, gal, doll face, doll, dumpling. We are going to give them no respect. How many of you have friends in that group? Let me put it this way. How many of you used to have friends in that group? Because some of these people are going to leave here very angry. White people's number one freedom in the United States of America is the freedom to be totally ignorant about those who are other than white. We don't have to learn about those who are other than white. And our number two freedom is the freedom to deny that we're ignorant. Today, we're going to take away these people's freedom to be ignorant. I want you to understand how the system works. And believe me, this is how the system works. We make laws to support white superiority and to reinforce white superiority. And when you catch on to how it works, then we change the laws. I didn't invent this exercise. I learned this from Adolf Hitler. One of the ways they decided who went into the gas chamber was eye color. This exercise is not without precedent. Oh, now look at this, watch him. Look at him. Should we just sit anywhere? Should we just sit anywhere? 
If you came into a room in which the chairs were arranged in this way, and the brown-eyed people were sitting in the, these chairs in this way, and nobody was sitting in the chairs in the middle, where would you sit? In the middle. That would make sense to me. Would it make sense to you? Where are you going? Get in the blue-eyed section. The blue-eyed section is in the middle of the room. Get there. You're a non-brown? As far as I'm concerned, you're a bully. Now, is this one giggling? What do you know about him? It's because he's ignorant. What else do you know about him? He's in his little kid child's ego state, isn't he? Get up here and sit down on the floor. You too, get up here and sit down on the floor. <laughs> I was really tired when I entered the room, but I didn't have any expectations. I was just sitting there and wondering how it could be an emotional experience. On the day these kids, these white kids are in this exercise, they see themselves as other people see them for the first time in their lives. What are you going to do? I'll sit here until you tell me to do something. <laughs> you see what he's doing? I'm a girl. See what she's doing? It didn't take very long before intimidation set in and uh, before my, my buttons were pushed. Now, while I've been talking, some of you have been sitting there reading the signs. I'm not going to put up with that any longer. So you in the back row, stand up and read the first sign on that wall back there. Only brown eyes need apply. Read it so we can hear you. Only brown eyes need apply. Next. Why can't... A blue eye be more like a brown. Read it again. Get it right this time. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? Read it again. Get it right this time. Pronounce each one of those words correctly as they're written. Why can't a blue eye be more like a brown? Next. I'm not prejudiced. Some of my best friends are blue eyed. How many of you have ever heard that one before in another form? Oh, yes. Favorite claim of liberals, right? I'm not prejudiced, and my best friends are black. Has any person ever said to you, any good liberal person ever said to you, when I see you, I don't see you black? Every day! <laughs> Every damn day! How many of you have had that experience? When I see you, I don't see you black. And what do you say to them when they say that? But I am. But I am. And then what do they say? They say, but I don't see color. I don't see color. <laughs> How many of you think they do see color? Well, people, if they didn't see color, they wouldn't say, when I see you, I don't see you black, because they wouldn't see black, would they? You can't say, I don't see color, because then you'd be seeing in black and white. And that would be a really weird world to see. If everything was black and white, we would be some really messed up people. It happens to me on a daily basis in the institution I'm at, and there's really no way around it, because whether people do it intentionally or not. Do you know the physical aspects of the listening skills? You're afraid not? What about you? Definitely not. Definitely not. What about you? A bit. A bit? Yes. A bit? Yes. Well, tell me what the bit is that you know. Uh, the bit that I know is that you stand up straight, you look at the person who's speaking, and you pay attention to what they're saying. What if you're sitting down? I am sitting down. Yes. Then you can't listen, right? No, you can listen by sitting down. Oh, you just said you stand up straight? I said you sit up straight. You Did she say you sit up straight or did she say you stand up straight? <laughs> Is this a universal problem with blue-eyed people? You have a paper and pencil with you? No. Do you? Over in my bag. Maybe. Over in your bag? Yes. Why is it in your bag? Because that's where I keep it. That's where you keep it? When Why did you put your paper and pencil over there? Because I was not, I did not know when I was going to be needing it. You came to a learning experience, right? Yes. Did you ever go to a learning experience before? Yes. Did you ever take notes? Yes. What did you use? I used a paper and pencil. Paper and pencil. And did you keep it with you so that you could take notes? Yes. Yes. Why didn't you do that this time? Because I was not planning on taking notes. You weren't planning on taking notes? You no. think you can remember everything that's going to be done in here and said in here? Not word for word. Not word for word. So what should you have done? I. Probably, she's going to say, I probably should have done it right. What should you have done? I should have brought my paper and pencil over here and kept it with me That's the entire right. time. That's right. You're acting angry. I am angry. What are you angry about? I'm angry that you're yelling at me. Do you hear me yelling? This is yelling! Have I done that yet? 
Okay, you're using a stern voice. And are you angry. are you defining me? No, I am not defining you. Is she you. defining me? Does she say I'm yelling when I'm not? Perception is everything. Do you feel like I'm yelling at you? Yes. Yes, why? Because you're using a stern voice. A uh, stern... Honey, <coughs> it isn't my fault you're stupid. Would you like me now, to go get my paper and pencil? I wouldn't like you in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> okay, then that's fine. Let's, let's get that understood okay. here. This isn't a matter of whether I like you or not. Repeat after me. One hen. One hand. One hand. Two, not hand. Hen. 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 Lay eight eggs. One hen. One hen. One hen, two ducks. One hen, two ducks. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four hemorrhic oysters. Hemorrhic oysters? I'm sorry. Limerick oysters. Limerick oysters. One hen, two ducks, three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, five corpulent porpoises. One you can remember everything, honey. No, this I isn't can't. hard for you. Go for it. One hen, two ducks, <coughs> three squawking geese, four limerick oysters, Five, I forget the other one. Do you wish you had a paper and pencil? No. Do you think you're going to need one if I keep testing you on that? Yes. <clears throat> then are you going to wish you had a paper and pencil? Yes. Yes. So in the future, what are you going to do when you go to a learning situation? Bring a paper and pencil. And keep it with? Me. You. Did you learn anything? Yes. Do you appreciate what you just learned? Yes. Did you like the way it was taught? No. No. Any of the rest of you ever taught in that fashion? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And did you have to express appreciation for it? Yeah. yeah. Could you learn something from her example? What are you crying about? Sorry. What are you crying about? My feelings were hurt. How were your feelings hurt? Just were. Should I feel sorry for her? I don't expect you to. Should I feel sorry for her? Some of you are thinking, oh, this is too harsh for this young woman. James Byrd, black man in Texas. Dragged to death behind a pickup truck by three white males. Matthew Shepard. Matthew Shepard. Young man about your little old, your little younger than you are. Had the misfortune to be born gay. Beaten. Beaten. With a pistol about the head until they cracked his skull. And then they hung him on a deer fence and left him there overnight and somebody coming along on a bicycle the next day saw a bunch of clothing hanging on this deer fence and they went over and started to take the clothing off the deer fence and found a body in the clothing. I'm sorry, but those things happen because we live in a society in which people are allowed to treat those who are different in an ugly way because of their differentness. I cannot shed tears for a young white female in this exercise who knows that this is an exercise, who knows that it's temporary, who knows that she's getting a college credit, one hour of credit for being here. I'm sorry. I have to save my sympathy and my empathy for those who go through something much worse than this every day of their lives. Tears were coming in my eyes, and when I saw these people crying, I'm like, but it wasn't for them, it was for the the fact that I know people who are going through that right now while we were sitting in that classroom and had the privilege and the time and the opportunity to be going through an experiment, that there are people outside who go through that 10 times worse than any student of color in that room.